repeat moment flippy flappy oh, oh. <laughs> So we've just put a plate in there, no welder will be pleased with those welds, I am however. There's three holes in the plate, there, there and there, so I've welded through those three holes um, and then weld around all the outside, which should give us strength because obviously we've cut out large sections here for the exhaust to go down. That little bit will get cut away as well, that little bit there, just to give us a couple more mil because we want a two and a half inch downpipe. I'm going to add a little uh, triangle of steel just there to help just stop it twisting and flexing and then we've got a plate to go there and a plate to go there to bolt on a lower bush through because at the moment it's just uh, we're lopping around a brace which will go from that top of the turret to that top of the turret might tidy that up and then grind it all back zinc prime it and then we'll leave it till that till the very end and then have it powder coated Whew. right folks so we've been looking for a solution uh, to the suspension pin basically so it goes on the lower arm inside uh, I'll show you actually oh, it goes here basically so obviously that's no good so uh, this is actually our, our uh, uprated modified arm and uh, it will sit in there like that but obviously uh, I'm going to put a plate here but I was looking at using just a bolt but they're funky sizes being mini and I want to I couldn't see me machining bushes down and then have to replace a bush that'd be a pig and all that. So I came up with a plan that yeah I'm still going to put a plate there and probably support the top which is made out of this 6mm steel uh, but the original pin looks something like this a uh, bit of a fangled old thing, a bit of random um, obviously it allows for a little bit more bracing going further out but besides the point. So the plan was to shorten this so first of all I took this ring off, it's just welded on here uh, we then straightened the pin out as best we could and then I took the end slot off this, which houses the, well, has a flat piece. I mean, I could have made that, obviously, but this is the crucial piece that I wanted here. Uh, and then we measured the, the distance between the original uh, gap there for the bush, at uh, plus six mil for the, the steel, which will go there. And then that gives us the pin. So just to repeat that again on there, and then we can make some brackets up um, that will basically this will go through this that piece of steel like that, then through the bush, and then through the original part of the subframe. You may have noticed uh, we've made some more spacing. G stands for grind, X stands for cut. Uh, we've got some little sort of fillets in there. Um, we've also modified a few other bits on here just as we're seeing, cut back some welds and reground them um, and then I've modified these top edges for the engine clearance so for boost pipes to come around here. I know some other guys have run these bars like this so I've done the same. Uh, so we've filled old holes, filled the ends, changed the angle of that coming up, uh, we've welded in some nuts in the back of there and we've put these little plates in behind uh, to house the nuts uh, because wiper sits here and boost pipes and stuff so that I'm trying to make as I make anything modified that stuff's easy come out so you know you've got two bolts either side the front there two on the side nice and easily that would come apart um, and you'd gain access to things for maintenance um, hopefully it doesn't need any maintenance well you know major work but maintenance you hope to kind of get access to stuff uh, oil filter is still a bit of an issue it's going to be sitting about here so um, some final modifications probably will be to cut a little piece of this out and brace it up to here like that just so I can get my hand in from underneath and do the oil filter all around the top like this otherwise it's um, drive shaft out for every time I want to change oil which would be a bummer we've obviously gone from the cardboard aided design pieces to the metal ones uh, and we have our pin here ready we've cleaned up this area uh, we're going to try and give it another little wire brush in there just to clean it up, we'll prime that and then we'll get this tacked in. Basically that's going to sit in there, like that, we'll measure that up, make sure that's all nice and square, and then this plate here, there's like a strengthening plate, not quite like that obviously, it's going to have an overlap on the top to secure that in and then the, the bush sits in there, the pin goes through there, job done. Could do with a mill, I've got to admit, 12.49 millimeters hole. It was a bit tricky to do with a Dremel, evenly, but we've done a happy job. So I'm going to make uh, two more of those now for the other side, and then we can weld them all up. So that's it all um, etch primed. So it doesn't look nearly as pretty as I want it to, but it was going to blooming work, and it's strong, so can't always have everything. Pretty welds and all. Anyway, 
Let's give it a lick of paint, just protect it. Uh, and then, because it's going to get scratched and stuff, and then we'll do final paint when we do final fitting and final paint for the car. Can't quite remember if we've discussed the bonnet, but there's the bonnet that was with the fourth shell. Initially, I just thought it would be scrap. I'd only really looked at the one edge. Uh, but actually, it looks pretty tidy. No real dents to talk about. Uh, a slight little bit of bodywork just on the edge there, just a little tiny crease that's been twisted at one point, which we can just get rid of. Um, but on this side, just surface rust in those areas over there, which has been treated, and we'll just prime in a moment. Again, same in the middle, but nothing serious. Tiny little bit of odd spot there that I'm just going to cut out and put a new section on. This is the worst bit, and this front lip. So today, I'm going to take this front lip off. I've got a brand new one coming. It was like eight quid. Um, so we'll take that one off and weld a new one on. It's just a strengthening panel, and then a piece of chrome goes across the front of it anyway. And then um, I'm going to cut that out, weld a nice new piece in, bit of strengthening plate there, and then weld the, the catch back on, and maybe see if we can get a better spring on that, because it's not doing much at the moment. And then, other than like sanding, priming, painting, the bonnet actually is just a couple of simple repairs, and we have a bonnet. Obviously hinges and straps would be good, but we'll do that in time. So this evening we're going to do those minor repairs. Okay, so we've identified a few areas of repair. There's a little split that we're just going to weld up there. There's the area there which we've cut out. Not exactly difficult to cut out. Now then we've taken the edge off there, crusted it, primed it. We've also beaten every edge into a straight edge, which it wasn't before. Uh, there was also a pinprick dent which we bounced out there. And then this area had the latch on, we've cut out, corrusted, primed, and that was the tricky one to make. So that has a curve in multiple directions, and then those two nice angular pieces. So that's going to sit in there, and then we've cleaned all this up, put a couple of holes in it ready, and we'll position that and weld that on afterwards. But one thing at a time, let's weld the little patch in, weld the big patch in, Weld the split and then we'll see where we're at with that. So while the primer's drying on that, this uh, mount needs some sort of finishing. So what we're going to do with that is close the panels. Um, I've just welded along the top edge. We've welded the seam, we've melded the top edge. We've melded that underside there and the seam there. Um, but now we're going to, when we spot welded inside, base plug welded, these are just nasty old tacks, we'll grind those off. Closing plate for both sides. There and there, closing plate for both sides, there and there. But before we close it off inside, we're going to cut some tube um, which will fit inside there so that when you push your put your bolt through and do it up, you don't crush crush that which it would crush. You actually obviously squeeze it down onto the onto the gearbox. And then we'll see what that does. We'll see if this little section here doesn't need a reinforcement. I hope it doesn't, but if it does, we'll just put a little bit on the sides, um, just an upright little bit on the side, both sides, that won't be an issue. So just quickly before I close up the ends, uh, this is what I've done. Uh, so plates are, plates are on obviously, so you can see in there there's a piece of tube. Um, obviously it doesn't interrupt with the bolt hole, you can just see it in there. And I just welded at the top and the bottom just to hold it in place and then when you put a bolt through that, uh, it won't crush the, the tube, the pipe here, it'll hold it obviously and just all the energy goes into clamping that onto the gearbox. Holding the gearbox and the engine in. Right, let's close them up and then it almost is ready. Uh, as I say, I might be putting a support there, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna sort of clamp this up and see what sort of bend we've got in that. All right, it's a very wet day out there. Lemon is MOT'd and ready. Uh, needs a new issue, but let's signal that for a moment. Um, Kev, this video is on Kev. What have we done? Well, the front subframe is uh, sort of undercoated, as if you like, just giving it a, a, a prime, Wizink primer and just a, a quick coat, like top coat, uh, but a quick spray over with hammerites just to protect it really from getting rusty as it's been rubbed back so many times, you're gonna end up with no nothing left. So there's a few things done there that I'm happy with. A bunch of things I do again that I'm not happy with, but there we go. Need some slight adjustment to that mount, um, which is, is, is nearly there, um, but a little bit of a tweaking on the top there and I'll be happy with it. But we have an issue and the issue is, show you. She's a little bit front heavy, as in she's gonna fall over in a minute. So this brings me 
to just get on with the next job really, which is a grotty and noisy job. The underside of the back end of the car needs all rubbing back. Under ceiling, stone chipping, and we can fit the rear subframe. Alti and more on the next episode of Project Kef.